Bless God. A testimony and dance. He kept me. He kept me through it all. He kept her. He kept her. And we thank God for his keeping power. Amen. Amen. Sister Erica just want to leave us with that praise dance on how God has brought her from a mighty long way. Uh, amen. Just come on, give God praise for young Erica and all that God has helped her accomplish in her life. She's getting ready to go back, uh, go to Michigan. Now, where, where in Michigan? Grand Rapids, Michigan, to do her, is it called internship? Residency, do her residency. Um, and, and so she wanted to leave us with that testimony and praise dance, and, and we thank God for her. Amen. Uh, accomplishment. Well, well done. Well done, Erica. Well done. Well done. Amen. We give God all the praise, all the glory. Amen. Our young folk just stepping forward and, and, and doing what God has gifted them and called them to do, and I thank God for all of them. Thank God for all of you. Stand, at, stand to your feet while... Amen. I know you want to stand. I know you want to stand. Amen. Amen. Got an energetic crowd today. Amen. God must be moving by his spirit today. Amen. Bless you. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Before we get to the message, though, let's just give God some praise in the house. Come on. Give him a thunderous praise. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Come on. We can do better than that. Come on. Give him glory. Give him praise in the house. Amen. When you think back to who woke you up this morning, who started you on your way, who kept you through hell and high water, who kept you when the doctors gave up on you, who kept you when they didn't know what to do, but God brought you through. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Good to see. Amen. Good to see Sister McFarlane in the house. Well, good to see all of you now. I don't mean to overlook anybody, but good to see Sister McFarlane back in the house. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I knew there was something bright other than your beautiful bright dress. I knew your spirit was there. Amen. But we give God praise for everybody in the house today. Our visitors, our guests, all. I'm not going to hold you long. Let me just get to right to the message, and 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 we'll. Do whatever we're going to do, all right? Amen. Let us pray first before we get to the message. Dear gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this day, a wonderful, glorious day that you blessed us to be able to participate in and give you glory, give you honor, Lord. And we just thank you so much. We give you praise for you alone are worthy. I pray now, Lord, as I stand at this sacred desk to attempt to preach your word, Lord. I pray that you would preach through me. Holy Spirit, stir me up. Use me for your glory. I realize that I don't have any power in and of my own self. All of my help comes from you, Lord. So help me now, Lord, as I attempt to deliver a, a relevant message to these are your people, Lord. Give them ears to hear, hearts to receive, and then give us a desire to do what you've called us to do, Lord. I just give you thanks. I, I pray that, that uh, it will, the word will fall on good ground, Lord, today. Good soil, good soil, and bear much fruit. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Let all God's people say amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Good. Now, did you greet your neighbor yet? Well, greet him one more time. Just say it's good to be here today. Good to be in your midst. I feel blessed just being in your midst today. Amen. 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 That's right. Let, let, let some of that anointing rub off on you. And see, anointing goes two ways now. Y'all may be seated, but anointing goes both ways. Don't think you're the only one got anointing in the house now. Everybody that's saved has some anointing, has been anointed. Amen. Amen. Hey, I'm, I think if there'll be prayer in the, in the, in the pews, there's going to be some preaching in the pulpit. Y'all... Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all praying. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, I, um, we, are, we are embarking on a series of messages from the pulpit, um, and I don't know all the, the add-on parts of the theme, but, but the main theme is it is a time and a season for everything. And it comes from Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. 
but uh, there are going to be a, a number of, of our own preachers and other uh, preachers uh, coming from other ministries that are going to be talking on the theme, it's time. Somebody say it's time. It's time, and then in Ecclesiastes, it lists a whole lot of different things that it's time for. But I want to just, I'm just going to read Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, and, and read all the way down through the eighth verse and, and uh, run with that. It says um, in NIV, well, I'll read King James. I'm f- more familiar. I'll read King James. It says, to everything in, in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, the first verse, it says, to everything there is a time, th- there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, third verse, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, four a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Verse number five, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Verse six, a time to get, a time to loose, a time to keep, a time to cast away. Seven, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, silence, a time to speak. Verse eight, Last verse, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time uh, of peace. So all these different times, and, I, and, and like I said, we have a whole slew of um, uh, preachers coming, coming through to uh, expand, expound on those uh, different times that God has laid before us. Um, but right here, uh, I'm going to be dealing with uh, Ecclesiastes, the third verse. It says, a time to kill and a time to heal. I know y'all want to ask me what time is it, but uh, 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 tell your neighbor, it's time to heal. It's time to heal. I know that first part of that verse, that sentence says, a time to kill and a time to heal. But we're dealing with a time to heal. Uh, the writer of the book of Ecclesiastes is possibly Solomon, uh, one of the wisest men to ever live on the face of this earth, says that there's a time and a season for everything um, under the sun. God wants us to know that there is a portion of time allocated for every work, whatever purpose that he has for us, every good thing that he has appointed for us in our life. There is a time and a season for that. There's a time for anything positive and anything productive that God has given us to do. Uh, And and, and so we have to be very uh, discerning of the time and not waste the time and not miss the time that God has given us. Uh, a lot of times we, we, we waste our time, we, we, uh, and I, y'all pray for me on this. I, I don't have the spirit of procrastination. It's just that the spirit of procrastination messes with me a lot, and, and I have to rebuke. I'm serious. Now, I, I, have, I have to seriously rebu- re, uh, rebuke him and so, uh, so that I don't waste time. But I but, uh, want to talk about us as a church, us as a ministry. Is that all right? Is it all right if I talk about you? Amen. Us. Us. I meant us. I, if I talk about us, I'm, I'm always a part of Shiloh, too. Um, we have to be able to discern what time it is, not by the movement of the hands on the clock, but by God's movement and his hands upon us. We have to be able to discern the time. His word moves and still speaks to us today in this passage of text in Ecclesiastes, the the third chapter where we're coming from, the third verse, a time to kill and a time to heal. Shiloh, our our time and our purpose for today is to deal with this serious issue that is real in many of our houses of worship. And I want to talk about healing in the house. Is that all right, healing in the house? Now, our, our individual healing uh, 
has to be addressed in, in more than just an individual healing of us as a single person uh, entity. Uh, we've got to look at it as Shiloh's collective healing. That includes healing and, and he he healing and, and healthy relationships that we need to foster uh, and, and, and so forth. And this is something that we've got to deal with on how we have healing uh, within the body of Christ but more particularly here in the body of Shiloh. Um, Shiloh, this is a time for us to heal. And I'm going to keep stressing that. It's imperative. It's of the utmost importance that we get healed and become as healthy as we possibly can, not only individually but as a, as a uh, collective church, because I believe that God has much more in store for us than we've ever seen in our life. I really, truly believe that the best is yet to come. Tell somebody the best is yet to come. Amen. The best is yet to come. And in order for us to properly do the things, do the ministry that God has purposed for us, purpose for Shiloh, and if you're a visitor or a guest here today, you're part of us today. Hello, somebody. Uh, to do those things that he's called us to do, we have to be as a ministry and as individuals healed and healthy. Somebody say healed and healthy. We have to be healed and healthy if we're going to do the things that we need to do. I, I realize that now I, I, I consider myself a, a healthy person. Uh, uh, I consider myself to be more or less healed of what are ailments I've, I've had for a long, that, that had in the past or whatever. But I've come to realize that the older I get, the less work I can do well, no, let me back that up. The less time I can work at the things I used to do. Does that make any sense? Uh, you know, if, if, I, if I did something in the yard for, you know, three, four hours straight back in the day, you give me 30 minutes today, and I'll take a break. That's wisdom now, though. And then I'll come back and hit it again. Take a, That's wisdom, but I realize I can't do what I used to do. I'm not saying I'm not as healthy as I used to be, but the vim and the vigor, the stamina, all that begins to diminish or dwindle. But I believe that being part of the body of Christ, I, give, I believe that he gives us the energy, the, the, the strength, the wherewithal to do what he has set before us. And we may get tired. And mama would always say, whatever you do, you may don't give up. You may have to give out. Come on, somebody. But whatever you do, don't give up. So I'm determined not to give up at what God has called us to do. But in order to do that, we have to be healed and healthy. Tell somebody it's a time to heal. We need to heal and, and make our ministry healthier than what it is today. And we've got to allow God to heal us individually and uh, um, uh, and also collectively, and I know somebody's talking, what, what does he mean, individually and collectively? Well, we've got to be healed uh, individually. There are some issues that we may have been carrying around that have burdened us down, and we need to let those, ask God to deal with those things, heal us. Um, we, we, uh, uh, we, as a ministry, are made up of individuals, and our individual ministry flows up to the collective ministry. So we are also, we are individuals, and yet we are part of the collective ministry of Shiloh, but it goes even higher and bigger than that. Shiloh is part of the body of Christ. Are y'all following me? So we have individual health that we need to deal with. We need to be healthy with the Lord. Our, we need to be healthy with our church, meaning that we have to be healthy in our relationships with one another. But then there's a greater calling, being part of the body of Christ. We have to be healthy in Christ ourselves. Are y'all with me? Yes. Now, I, I, everybody uh, that is not saved, uh, well, let me put it the other way. Everybody that is saved, I like to keep it positive. Everybody that is saved is a part of the body of Christ. Everybody that's saved in here is a part of the body of Shiloh. 
Everybody that's saved individually is connected to God yourself. So, so what does that mean to us, Brother Preacher? Let, let me see if I can make some sense out of this. Um, because some might think that because I'm referring to a healthy church, I'm not talking about them individually. They may think I'm talking about a healthy church like most pastors talk about a healthy church. It means that we have a lot of members, have a lot of money in the bank, able to do what we want to do, uh, have a lot of volunteer staff, a lot of personnel to help out, uh, to complete the task at hand. Uh, That's not necessarily what I'm talking about as far as a healthy church. All those things are good, but just having money doesn't mean you're healthy. Hello, somebody. That's all good. But, but that is not the kind of health and healing I'm talking about today. Let me step back from that. Now, yes, it would be nice to have all kind of millions of dollars in the bank and be well healed financially. Yes, it would be nice to have three or four services running every Sunday because we're packed out at 10, packed out at noon, packed out at... Yes, that, that's a good, healthy church. Uh, uh, but I'm not talking about that kind of health to, to today. I, I'm talking about the healthy relationship that we have with one another. I'm talking about a different focus of healing and health in this body of believers called Shiloh. I'm talking about having healthy healed relationships, first of all, with God. Y'all with me? The question is, do we really have whole and healthy relationships with God? That's an individual question. Do we as an individual really have a healthy relationship with God? My question is, I know it's it's in one of these songs I heard long ago back in the day. Uh, The question is, who is he and what is he to you? Is he just some genie that we or, 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 or some mystical, magical person that we come and talk to on Sunday and hope he does something for us? Is, is he our genie in the bottle that we rub and hope he show up at the right time? Is he our Santa Claus on Christmas hoping that he comes and just gives us stuff? Who is he and what is he to you? Is there, do you have a real personal relationship with the Lord? Everybody should shout it back if you have. Should, yeah, Pastor, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I asked the question, and y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. I, I know I'm probably certifiable, but I'm not crazy yet. My question is, do you have a real, healthy relationship with God? Don't lie to me. Don't, if you don't, be, keep silent. I, I, ten people said, praise God. Okay, the rest of y'all honest. Okay, so that's what we need to work on. So who is he and what is he to you? Um, um, and, and who is he to all of us, especially those who are saved? Who is God to you? Is uh, My question for those that are saved, that call themselves a part of the body of Christ, is there some mending that needs to take place on our part in the relationship? Is there some healing? Is there, are there some things that we need to do? Do we really walk in harmony with him every day? I remember that song that the old folks used to sing, uh, um, I've come to the garden Alone while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice, the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own. And and as we tip, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. That, that song was speaking about a real personal relationship with the Lord, that every day they would meet the Lord and go on walks and just talk with him, kind of like Enoch did when he walked with the Lord so far that finally God just said, Enoch, you walk so far from your home, you're closer to my home, just come on and go with me on home. And he took Enoch to, y'all, y'all don't know about Enoch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what happened on their walk. They were so personally close together that God just took him on home. I, I wonder, do we have that kind of relationship with the Lord where, where I know that I'm his and he's mine? Now, I'm talking about mending some things, healing some things today. Uh, are, are we allowing him to use us for his glory? Because if he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, we, we don't mind him using some of our stuff. 
any of y'all have friends, neighbors, or whatever, or come and knock? I know back in the day they used to knock, a neighbor would come over and buy a cup of flour, and, or a neighbor would borrow your lawnmower or some tool or something like that. I have a neighbor down around the corner borrow my ladder. I haven't seen the last the six. That's because I haven't asked him for it back. I, I'm going to go get it, though. But, but that's what your neighbors, when you have a relationship with folk, you, you, you feel like you can knock on the door and borrow stuff and get things from them. I wonder, do we have that kind of relationship with the Lord? When was the last time that we really stopped and had a good, intimate walk and a good, intimate conversation with God and did not ask him for anything? Didn't have our hand out begging him for something else. Instead, all we had our heart out just, uh, just and, and told him how much we love him and appreciate him. When was the last time we'd been on a walk like that? A walk just to walk with him and thank him. Just to thank you, Lord, for what you did yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for what you did back then in the day. Lord, just thank you. I'm just glad to be with you. I don't want anything from you right now. Just you. Do we have that kind of relationship with the Lord? Now, we can, we can run to him and drop on our knees real quick, fast, in a hurry when something negative happens. But, but just on an average day, do you just say, it's good to be with the Lord. I'm so glad you're living inside me, all around me. Lord, I wonder, do we have, I'm talking about a relationship. There needs to be some healing, I believe, in some of our relationships. And I'm going to tell you the truth. My relationship isn't as great as it can be with the Lord, but we're working on it. Tell your neighbor I'm working on it. I'm working on it, working on it, working on it. I'm not there yet. I'm not all that I'm supposed to be, not all that I'm going to be, but we're working on it. I'm still a work in progress. I'm still like that lump of clay on the potter's wheel. He's still working on me. Hello, somebody. Tell your neighbor he's still working on me. Still working, still working, still working. When was the last time we were not ashamed to praise him in the sanctuary? Because some folk are ashamed to praise him even in the sanctuary. Give him glory in the sanctuary. And I'm not talking about praise him like your neighbor praise him. That's between your neighbor and God. You praise him the way you want to praise him. I'll never, ever tell you to praise him like I praise him. If I stand up, hands up, jump up on my seat, do a backflip all the way back to the last row, that's me and God. You don't have to praise him like I do. And if all you want to do is just wave your hand, maybe you want to sit down and praise him. and get that That's you and God. Hello, somebody. I can't tell you how to interact with your intimate, personal God. Come on, somebody. But when was the last time you really just gave him some praise? And it doesn't take a whole lot to praise him. Wave your hand, call his name, give him a clap, give him a hallelujah. When was the last time that you really gave God a praise? I'll be so glad one of these days, and like I said, you don't have to praise him like somebody else, but I'll be so glad one of these days when we just blow the roof off the house and fire and, 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 and uh, uh, burglar alarms on your car start to go off because we made so much noise up in here giving our God praise. Y'all don't hear me yet. Y'all don't hear me yet. When is the last time you told some non-church folk about your relationship with the one you love so much? With God. When was the last time you told, y'all didn't catch that, non-church folk, folk who don't go to church. Oh, we tell each other all day, oh, God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Oh, he brought me from my mother. Oh, I had this. Oh, and he just did. God is good all the time and all the time. God, we can tell each other that. It's almost become a habit. It's become a routine, you know, talking to each other. But have we shared it with anybody else that doesn't know God? Have we shared him, this one that we ha have this great relation, or supposed to have a great relationship, have, have, have we shared him with anybody um, that's not saved? God desires to have a complete, whole relationship, an intimate, loving relationship with all of us, with you and with me. If there's anybody unsaved in the house, he wants to have that same relationship with you. God is no respecter of persons. God doesn't look for big, big eyes and little U's. He, he doesn't look, that's not the way he looks. He looks at all of us standing on the same level ground before him. That's why I love him so much. 
because he doesn't discriminate between one and the other. His grace, his, his grace and his mercy is for all of us, and he wants to be intimate with all of us. I'm just talking about what kind of relationship do we have with the Lord. Is there some healing? Is there some mending in the relationship that we have? God desires to have us complete, whole, loving, have a complete, whole, loving, intimate relationship with all of us. And if we do not have uh, this kind of of relationship with, with him, now is the time to restore whatever we lost and bring it back. If we don't have it, now is the time to get it. There needs to be some healing in our relationship with the Lord. If you do not have it, you ought to call on God and say, Lord, heal me. Now is the time to heal our relationship with the Lord. It's time to ask God for his forgiveness and get back what you lost somewhere along the line. Because in some of us, when we first got saved, we were setting the world on fire. We, when we got saved, we were so in love with Jesus, we went and got the biggest Bible we could find just to show that we love Jesus. We were talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus every day, every hour. Folk got tired of hearing us talk about him. We were so in love with Jesus. And then something happened along the way when he... Let us go through a trial or tribulation. And it didn't work out the way we wanted it to work out. God, do you still love me? We questioned him. The question he was asking us is, do you still love me in the midst of your trials and tribulation? Talking about a relationship with God, relationship with God. I'm so glad he loves me, not for what I am, who I am, uh, what I used to be, what I'm hoping to be. He just loved me for me. Don't you just love folk like that when he just love you for you? Not because you have a lot of money, a lot of pizzazz, not, not because she looks real good, he looks all handsome and tall, but because you just love him just because you love him. Have you ever had anybody love you like that? That's how God loves you. He loves you just because. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Come on, give God some praise for loving us like that. All I'm saying is that if we don't have a whole and complete intimate relationship with him, now is the time to restore or to get what we never had with God. Now is the time to heal our relationship. Because as I was talking about earlier, sometimes when we first get saved, we're hot, we're on fire for the Lord. But somewhere along the way, we allow somebody to throw some water on the fire, and the fire cools out, but now it's time to heal our relationship with God. It's time to ask God for his forgiveness and get back what we lost somewhere along the line. You remember David, don't you? David knew that he had a great relationship with the Lord, but somewhere along the line, David did wrong in his relationship, and I, I, could, I can explain it, but you, you know about it. Uh, it. It's for everybody to read and everybody to know. Yeah, the woman went up on the roof and took a bath, and, and David's house was taller than hers, and, and he could see it. Y'all remember that, don't you? I don't have to go through all that, do I? Half the people said, I don't know what you're talking about. When, when you, you, David, David was a man after God's own heart. He, he, he wrote that as a heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth I after thee, O God. You, you remember David, don't you? He loved the Lord. He was one that trusted God, trusted God in the face of the little shepherd board and the boy in the face of the lion, in the face of the bear that came to eat the sheep, uh, in the face of Goliath. He called on God. God. You can defile me all you want. Talk about me all you want, Goliath, but this day God is going to honor, uh, honor me and he's going to allow me to slay you cut your head off and I'm going to feed your head your body to the to the ravens to the vultures vultures and, and 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 sure enough God enabled him to defeat the giant and God began to bless David every step of the way and David just fell in love with the Lord and wrote many songs about his love for the Lord but then David when he sinned took Uriah's wife uh, made love to her she got pregnant then he set Uriah up to get killed on the battlefield so her husband was out the way and he he took her and married her, and 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 uh, the prophet had to come in. I think it was prophet. Uh, it was a Nathan, one one of those fellows. Nathan came in. That's good enough, Nathan. 
I should have just stuck a prophet. It was it Nathan? Yeah. Okay, yeah, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan came in and said, told him a little parable about a man who had one sheep and a guy that had a whole pasture of sheep and, and, and the guy that had the big flock, his um, uh, friend came by to spend some time with them. So instead of killing one of his own sheep, he went and got the man's sheep that only had one sheep, killed it, you know, and fed it to his friend, and, and that was a parable. And David they heard the parable and said, that joker was wrong. Go get him, bring him here. He needs to be executed. He needs to be horse whipped. He needs to be all this. And, and Nathan looked at David and said, David, that, that man is you. That man only had one wife. You have a whole harem full of women, but you took his one wife and had him killed. And, and David knew that God... Uh, <laughs> That God, that his, his little sin had, not little sin, but his sin had been peeped. That God was upset with him and David fell out. And, and we believe it was in the 51st number of Psalms that David cried out and said, Lord, have mercy on me. I, I'm a sinner. I've sinned before you. And, and, uh, and, and David knew that his relate. I'm going somewhere with this. David knew that his relationship was out of whack with the Lord. He knew he had gotten off course in that relationship with Uriah, uh, Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. And, and David cried out, Lord, oh God, have a mercy on me according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. And then he cried out, purge me with his sup later on in that 51st number of Psalm. Wash me uh, uh, and I'll be whiter than snow, creating me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. David was saying, Lord, I want that relationship that we had before. I know I've done wrong. I've sinned before you. My sin is ever before me. But he said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. David cried out the Lord to, to God saying, I want that relationship back. Yes, I was wrong. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me. And I know you can make everything all right. Sometimes we have to look at the relationship we have with the Lord. And it may not be what it's supposed to be, but we can always call on him and tell him, Lord, heal me, wash me, cleanse me, and restore me to what I had with you before. I'm sorry, Lord. I wonder about how many of us have to heal that relationship. David realized it was time to men to heal his relationship between God him and himself. And God restored the relationship, and David got his joy back. I sometimes wonder why some folks sit up in church and don't crack a smile, don't smile at anybody, don't this or that. And I wonder, Lord, what is wrong? Something's wrong here. Uh, to me, if you, got jo if you have joy deep down in your heart, if you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Y'all too young for that song. I know that. If you have all that much joy deep down in your heart because of the Lord, you ought to show some sign every now and then. Hello, somebody. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let, let. But God restored David's joy, gave him his joy back. I'm talking about a time for healing. God is ready to heal and restore our joy, our fellowship with him. And all we have to do is repent and ask him, and he'll do it. I know he will. I've tried it for myself. Come on, somebody. Has anybody else ever tried it? He'll never tell you no. He will restore it. He is the God of restoration. Um, maybe it's not just relationship with God that needs to be healed, but we, that's the main relationship we, we need to heal or uh, the fellowship that we need to heal. Maybe there are relationships in your natural family that need to be healed. And nobody is trying to heal anything because all those that are involved in the dispute uh, are, are firmly established in their position, don't want to give up anything, already have their arguments set, uh, 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 cemented uh, in...
etched in stone. That's what I was looking for. Thank Deacon, I, I, I thank God for y'all. Y'all help me out every Sunday. Have, we have our arguments etched in stone. It can't be erased. We can't change it. And, and, and so we, we stay in our positions. And even the ones that claim to be religious and righteous, I'm talking about family now, relationships in the family, even those that, that claim to be religious and righteous and saved and forgiving are some of the non-forgiving as folk when it comes to stuff outside of church and sometimes even in church. And they know they are wrong as two left shoes. Wouldn't walk out of the house with two left shoes on, but they'll walk out of the house with attitude. Well, I recommend that we, I, I, I'm not a family counselor, but I, I'm going to recommend that you uh, watch uh, the, the movie My Dearest Family Reunion. Maybe he, he can help, he, she can help, he, he can help. <laughs> oh, that confused me. Let me leave that alone. <laughs> I'm for real. I, <laughs> that, that confused me. Maybe she, can, can help you on getting the family dispute together. I'm serious about that. There are things in our family that we need to deal with. Hello, somebody. And if we claim to be saved, we ought to be the bigger person to deal with it. Ask forgiveness. Go to them and apologize. Hear to what they have to say. That ought to be on us. I'm talking about restoring healing in the family. Healing, first of all, for with, our, with God, who, who is the one we love, the, the central one in our life. Healing in our families. There needs to be healing in the families, amen? amen, amen. But 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 the relationship with God is the most important relationship we'll ever have in our saved life. It, it needs to be healed and restored in our lives now, not later, not not when we see them at family reunion, not when we you know have a good outing or no no. We need to uh, restore those things in our family in our rela family relationships right now. Uh, not when and after the next problem arises because when the next problem arises it's going to be more dirt on the pile. Hello somebody. And going to be another excuse why. See I told you that that's why I didn't want to apologize in the first place. But we need to apologize make amends now. Maybe there are some relationships and this is where I really want to get to. Maybe there are some relationships within the body of Christ with other believers that need to be mended. That need to be healed. I just said maybe, I, not maybe. I, I know we all love each other, and oh, Lord, you know, you, you ask me anything, and I'll do it for you. That's how much we love each other. I know that. Um, um, yeah. But, but there needs to be healing in the body of Christ. There needs to be healing among us. Is it all right if I take my time and slow down right here? Because this is really of utmost importance. Our interpersonal relationships within the church. Within the church. The status of our relationships between one another, between Christian to Christian, especially in the same local church body. Sometimes we have ought against each other for the silliest things. The silliest things. The, the silliest one that I hear, and you all heard it before, did, didn't even speak to me. Walked right by me. Didn't say a word, didn't speak to me. Mm, I don't know who she thinks she is. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all never heard that before. Y'all never heard him. And, and what's the simplest solution? When they walk by, speak first. You want somebody to speak to you? Speak to them. Because you didn't speak either. So fingers could go both ways. But some of the silliest stuff, um, I don't know why he up again or she up again. They just want to be, hmm. Oh, y'all know these, huh? Silly stuff. They want to be seen because they think they. Oh, y'all doing all that, huh? <laughs> okay. I'm not. And then the one that really gets me, I don't like them because last Sunday, 
they sat in my uh, oh, okay let me I, I got my cue to keep on going I, I, let me go and wind it up. Let me go and wind it up. So dealing with re relationships in the local body here in Shiloh, it's important because God has a mighty work for us to do. Um, you have to know that we're connected to one another. If we're connected to the body of Christ, if all of us that call ourselves saved are connected to the body of Christ, then we're connected to one another. We're in the same body. A am I right about it? And... and uh, if we are one body, and we are, I'm going all the way back to new membership class 101. When, when we are one body, in one body, when the body is in sync with itself and working together, everything is fine. But when parts of the body don't want to work with the rest of the body and get out of sync, then something becomes wrong in the body. When the head tries to communicate to the body and the body doesn't respond properly, there's something wrong. There's tension in the body. And whenever there's tension in the body, there's dis-ease in the body because it's not functioning right. Tension in the body causes dis ease. Tension in our natural body when it's not functioning properly in the, in the, the different organs or the different parts of the body don't function together, we have to usually go to a doctor to see what is wrong because the body is not functioning like it's supposed to function. There's this ease in the body. The spiritual body, especially the local body, and I know we're saved and you know, I'm, I'm not receiving any you know, negative heal, diseases and all that stuff, but when we don't get along together, there's uneasiness or dis-ease in the local body. And it means that we cannot function properly to do what God has ordained or called us to do. Are y'all with me? I know I'm slowing this down to a third grade level, but that's about as high as I got in school, third grade. And so I'm trying to keep it real simple. And, and so when there's disease in the body, we usually say that body is sick. Something's wrong. Something's out of order. When the church body has all these little petty issues with each member of the body, because now the Bible says every member, su member supplies what the body needs. And if, the, and, and if we begin to shut down and don't supply what the body, the local body needs, just like in the natural body, the local body, and I'm not claiming this, but it doesn't operate properly and it becomes ailing or sick, or let me just back up, it becomes dysfunctional. And so if we're going to achieve the goal that God gave us to achieve, if we're going to do what we need to do, what we're supposed to do, what God has ordained us to do individually and collectively, there needs to be some healing in the pews. Let me back all of it. There needs to be some healing from the pulpit to the pews to the choir stand to that wall. That, there, need, out in the vest, there needs to be some healing in the church. There needs to be some letting go of those silly, foolish grudges, those attitudes that have been implanted and, and growing roots deeper and deeper in our mind and our spirit. We need to let that garbage go, get healed, and, and let God do a mighty work through us together. Because the Bible says two or three are better than one. More can get done. And so if two or three hundred together, imagine all that we can do for God. There needs to be some healing in the body.
If not, there'll be a lot of disease in the body, a lot of bitterness, jealousy, envy, and hate, gossiping about one another, backbiting, all these little diseases that come in and cause a whole lot of tension. And so we've got to get to the place where we rebuke the disease, where we rebuke the anger, the not being able to talk to one another and make amends with one another. Y'all listen to me. And so we've got to get it right. I, I'm, I'm just about through. I, I'm through. <laughs> but now God has also put some things in the body. And I don't know this. I, I probably should ask. Uh, y'all know, well, we got a doctor in the house. We have a, a certified nurse that probably knows more than the doctors. And I should ask them. But the God has made the body so that the body many times can self-heal. That's what he's calling on us to do, to heal one another. Haven't you read where he says, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders? Come on, somebody, and, 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 and anoint them with oil, pray for them, and the prayer of, a, uh, of the righteous will heal them. Come on, somebody. So we have healing in the body. The thing is whether or not we really want to be healed with one another, be made whole with one another. It's a time to heal because there's, and I'm, I'm through here, there, it's a time to, to heal because there's some work that we need to do for God's glory. If we have ought with one another, the Bible says even before you give your offering, if you got an ought with somebody, if you got something against somebody, you just leave your offering. Don't even give your offering. Leave, leave it over here before you give it and go to that brother that has an ought against you and find out what is wrong and make amends, get it healed, get it done, get it over with, and then come and give your offering. Are you saying, Brother Preacher, if somebody mad at me, I shouldn't give an offering? That's not what I said. Not what I said. The Bible tells us to go make amends. See, we, we skip the stuff we want to skip. Good, I ain't got to give no offering from now on because I know I ain't going to never like him, never like her. You got a real problem if you ever say that in your mind. <laughs> let, let me move on. I, I'm, I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. And, and so there needs to be some healing in the body. And I'm serious about this. God has called us for a mighty word. God is not playing with us. It's not playtime. We're seeing all around us that this world is, is going the opposite direction than God wants it to go. Even this country, we're, we're seeing it right now. And I believe that if we come together as a church and pray and, and, and as a body of Christ and pray, I believe there will be some real changes in this country, even in this world. If we do what we're supposed to do, the Lord needs us to do what we're supposed to do and see won't he change the things around us. We're crying and we're hollering about what isn't right, who isn't right, and all sorts of things. The Bible tells us to pray for him. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Pray for him. And if God don't cha doesn't change him, God can move him. God can change things. God changes things. But we have to get ourselves together and know that there's a mighty work. We're, we're supposed to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. What good are we if, we blow, if the, if the uh, light is hidden under a bushel, if the salt has lost its savior, savor it, its effectiveness? What good is it but to be thrown out and trampled under the feet of men? We have a mighty work. We are powerful, even by ourselves. What does the scripture say? One can chase how many? A thousand. And then when we start multiplying and getting together, two can chase 10,000. Look at how, look at what we could do if we would just get together on the same page and let God use us for his glory. And sometimes all it takes is an I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. There needs to be healing in the church. Amen. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet, and tell your neighbor it needs to be some healing. Needs to be some healing. Needs to be some healing. I'm serious about it. I'm not just saying it to say it. Needs to be some healing. God has some great things that he's intended for us to do. And we have yet to do them. We have to realize we're not doing them for our glory. We're doing it for his glory. For he's the one that made everything possible. He's given us all that we have, and so we thank God for him, and I thank God for every member, every visitor of this church. 
God bless you. Thank God for you. But there's a lot of work ahead. We've got to roll up our sleeves, hook elbow to elbow, and, and see God do a great work in this ministry. Amen. And in fact, why don't you just hook up with that neighbor next to you? If you, if you don't mind. I just want to pray right now. I just want to pray. Amen. Dear gracious God, you know what you've given us to do individually and collectively as a ministry of Shiloh. Lord, you know we may not see it all, but we know that you've given us great things to do in your name. You told us that we would do great exploits for you, that people will notice that we are your people by the life that we live, by the love that we have for one another. And so, Lord, I pray right now that we understand we have purpose, we have a mission, we have an intended end that you have for us. And so, Lord, help us to love one another even the more. Help us to lay aside any... Uh, petty uh, dis disagreements, arguments we may have, and just ask for forgiveness and, and make peace with our brothers and sisters so that we would be powerful, more powerful than, than we could ever imagine together, Lord. I, I thank you, Lord, for the power for every individual here. But, Lord, bless us to come together on one accord for your glory in your name, that you may be glorified in the earth realm and that the devil may be horrified when he sees us stand up together. Lord, I thank you for every soul here, every soul that's saved, Saved, unsaved, Lord, I thank you for them, Lord, because we're claiming those that are unsaved. We're reclaiming the backs, backsliders in Jesus' name, Lord. And we pray that you would use them in our ministry just as so you are using our, us, Lord, for your glory and your glory alone. We just give you thanks now. We stand together as one, Lord, and I pray that our hearts are saying that we will try our best to get along, to mend those old wounds and, and, and get over them and get past them, Lord, and do what you've called us to do. So thank you again, Lord. Empower us to do it, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Let all God's people say amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, we can do this. Tell your neighbor, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. We're going to prepare to receive communion at this time. Oh, open the doors of the church. I'm, thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone here today? I know that you, you may be seated. I know that uh, it, 